Anthem is finally in the hands of damn near everybody across the globe, and who oh boy, is it a lot of unexpected. Let's be incredibly clear from the jump. This is a demo. I will be making a full, highly edited, long-form video on the game when it fully releases, but today is for whipping together something more casual, because this is a demo. EA, in fact, made it very clear what kind of demo this is, probably to do some pre-release damage control. We've gotten some betas over the past few months that aren't betas at all. They're glorified demos. EA didn't go that route. This build of the game is from six weeks ago in development. The game's economy has apparently changed dramatically, a litany of bugs and glitches have apparently been worked out, progress has changed, essentially. Please, sire, you must believe us, we are nothing like our old selves, so please, no bad press. This kind of press spin is wrong. This is wrong. This kind of quote-unquote demo is a problem, but it's made worse when you actually sit down with the game. What we have on our hands today is the foundation of Anthem, and let me tell you, I am in some ways surprised. I know a lot of people that got their hands on the alpha that were privy to the behind closed doors E3 demo, and the concerns at that time were clear. I kept being told the same things. I don't know about this game, and this game probably needs to be delayed. Well, let's unpack the actual reality of it. Yesterday, for the first time in a very long time, I made an impromptu really quick video just to say, hey, the servers aren't working, but you can't judge a game just on the servers not working during a demo for the first couple of hours. It was just essentially a slight glimmer of hope that I had that once we got into the game, Anthem would be everything I wanted it to be. There was no way that was going to happen. Now that is not to say that Anthem is bad, that is not to say that it's the worst game ever, that is to say though that there are some very real problems here. Anthem is already in trouble if these things are not fixed, but underneath all of that is some good. So today we're going to look at the beta, or I guess the demo, in its quote-unquote entirety, just in the current state that it's in. Not in the sense of this is what the final game is going to be, but in the sense that this is kind of what the final game is going to be. So, today we're going to look at the good, we're going to look at the bad, we're going to look at everything, and talk about why Anthem, again, is already in trouble. So to get started, we have to look at, well, the first real problem with Anthem, which is the real problems. Yesterday, I made a quick video stating that, as I already said, we shouldn't judge Anthem based solely on the fact that the servers weren't working on day one. I made that video just a couple hours after the game was supposed to launch in demo state. Then, Anthem went and made me judge the damn game on actually playing it, and man, I had hope. Let me be very clear. There are positives here, and I'll get to them after this section, and I think that the actual gameplay of Anthem is enjoyable, but... Holy hell are there so many butts. Six weeks is frankly not enough time to fix the problems this damn demo has, and the next two weeks are not either. Not even close. Look EA, yesterday I tried to level with you. You gave out way more codes than pre-orders, and the servers exploded. But you charged so many people for early access to this demo, charged them money, and then didn't give them a chance to experience it. I managed to get in on PC almost immediately, but damn near everyone else didn't. It barely ever worked for the PS4 yesterday, and this would have been fine if it had begun working shortly after posting that video. It didn't. Then, when you do get in, sweet god. On PC, the game actually runs well. It appears to be well optimized. I have an i9 and an RTX 2080 Ti, so I have a really beefy rig and ran everything on Ultra just fine at 60fps, 2040p. But on console, it's been a different story. I have seen reports of faces not loading in, as I mentioned yesterday, massive screen tearing problems, infinite loading screens, and most of that doesn't scare me too much. Most of that can be fixed, but the real killer? The frame rate. The frame rate on PS4 was so bad for me in the hub, so bad, that I genuinely thought my PS4 was dying on me. Didn't happen much on actual missions, but in the hub where you're supposed to send a lot of time, man. I had gameplay stutters during missions, there were multiple enemies like this one where the AI just kind of stood there while I pounded them, menu freezes for the smooth experience PC mostly gave me, the PS4 was a shock. However, there were still problems on PC. This here is me staring at the damn drop off point for a quest item. 
that literally disappeared. Never spawned nothing. Spent 40 minutes going through the quest with the squad and nothing, nothing at all. We all eventually had to quit out and this happened to me in the exact same mission at the exact same time, two times in a row. I do not know how you fix the frame rate issues before launch. The good news is I didn't have very much of it while on actual missions and engaged within a javelin. I'm not saying it's impossible to fix them, I just genuinely don't know how it could be. I was right yesterday, don't judge a game based on day one demo server problems, but do judge a game when you've played it, and there's this many other problems. But let's get to the good before we get back to the bad again. I can't get up! You are crushing us! Hang on, I'll use my rocket boots! No! Let's get the obvious out of the way first. Traversal and Anthem, my god. The comparisons to Warframe are not entirely unwarranted, but this is different. I am not sure how those mechanics are going to translate to the balance of a full game, because as of right now, these javelins are unbalanced. There is an ice power in this game that is super overpowered, but they are some of the smoothest, most satisfying traversal mechanics in a game this generation. That is not hyperbole. In that original trailer, we saw someone go from ground to flying to swimming to flying to hovering like it was absolutely nothing, and most reactions were along the lines of, well, we'll see if we're really able to do that in the full game. You can, and it's just as smooth. This is the first time I've ever felt like a Transformer in a video game, and I've played Transformers games. Going from ground combat to air to get the hell out of there is buttery smooth, and it's commendable that Bioware, who hasn't exactly been known for their player movement options over the past decade or two, managed to put this together. Sure, it's a bit more complex Mass Effect Andromeda, but it's better. And this isn't simply a quality of life reality, this is Anthem. Let me clarify that. Anthem is, at its core from a gameplay perspective, a third-person shooter. So is Gears of War. Gears of War has a weighty but kind of awesome movement suite that involves rolling and cover sticking. However, you could play Gears of War and never give a lick about that or even care to master movement. The same cannot be said for Anthem. Anthem is built outward from and around its movement system. Every encounter relies on your ability to understand that movement system and to utilize it to your advantage. Someone with a sophisticated understanding of this system can carry you right through almost any encounter. Understanding the nuances of this system, mastering it are essential, and most importantly, enjoyable. This is what movement in open world environments should be. You could say what you want about Anthem and some of the things I'll discuss in a minute, but playing Anthem is an experience that is idiosyncratic, novel in so many ways, although one could say it feels a lot like Warframe, that it's actually hard to move on from Warframe and play this, but regardless, to get into the meat of the quest structure might be difficult for some because flying and mashing your way through the world is such a damn good time. But there's another very obvious positive, working in Anthem's favor, just working off of the beta alone, which is necessary to discuss before we get back into the real negatives. This one is impossible to miss. Chris, you're hogging up all the fans! Yo, well, you're hogging up all the ugly! In a year we have games like Fallout 76 launch and look like archaic relics of a past video game life, it's easy to forget that just because you're making an open world multiplayer game does not mean that it has to look like it runs on the cash register at McDonald's after six years of heavy use at a high volume location. Strained analogy? Yes. The point? Anthem is a fresh reminder, especially when played on a higher NPC, that games in 2019 can be, and with this type of AAA funding, should be stunning. Frostbite is putting on a stunning performance here even on consoles. I spent most of my time on PC, and this game is a sight to behold. I'm certain it's not quite coming across on your screens right now after all the processing YouTube and capture software does, but this game is one you have to see on your own monitors or TVs to believe. I don't want to spend too much time talking about how the game looks, as I'll do more of that when the game actually launches in its full state, but I will say this. Your javelins are awesome looking, and what we already know is that Anthem is going to be monetized to all hell. Don't worry, I'll get to that in a minute, but with the fidelity and care taken with how these javelins look in-game, being able to customize them, making them your own, hopefully will be a treat, even if that's a treat that's buried under an entire truck full of give me more money manure. But now it's time to get to the hit or miss parts of what Bioware has shown us thus far, and what's very clear is this game is not going to be what some people were hoping for 
for better and for worse. Tina, what are you doing? She's still here, Lois. Wasn't she supposed to leave like two hours ago? I thought so. I Go ask her what she's doing. I'm not asking her, you go ask her. Let's start with the obvious. This beta did not launch as planned, as already mentioned. Problematically, many people paid to pre-order this game under the pretense of an early access to the demo. That access was limited day one for a lot of people. But most of the server issues can, I think, maybe be ironed out by release, even if it's unlikely at this point. After all, that is the point of server testing in these kinds of pre-release environments. Once you're in, it's about becoming your dream Iron Man. First thing the game does is send you to its hub. It's here where you can customize your javelin, swapping out weapons, colors, helmets, arms, you name it at the forge. It's a relatively deep suite of customization options that should do a good job of keeping people engaged with reward loops. It also ties into the microtransaction realities, but we'll get there. After that, it's out into the world to actually play the game. Bioware hasn't been the king of third-person shooter gameplay, relying much more heavily on RPG mechanics, which makes it kind of astonishing that Anthem plays as well as it does. The third-person shooting here is almost ubiquitously good. It doesn't matter if you're using a shotgun or a typical rifle. There is a weight here and a feel here that is exactly what you want out of any shooter, even if I don't love the bullet, spongy, seemingly bulletproof enemies that you typically get in this genre. But speaking of shooting things, here's another problem. The game sounds pretty good, except half the time when you're firing your weaponry, the sound cuts out completely on PC. And I do mean completely. Or sometimes, all of a sudden, it'll get very, very quiet, like the audio file is missing, and then all of a sudden you can hear yourself shooting again. It got to the point where sometimes I was looking at my monitor going, am I actually firing my weapon or not? It's a problem. But underneath all that, I don't quite see the comparison some are making to Destiny. Yes, it is a MMO light. Yes, it is sci-fi. But other than that, they are quite different in how they play. And playing Anthem does accomplish the feeling of being, well, Iron Man. Gunning down enemies with friends can be enjoyable if they can get in. But most importantly, at least thus far, being a solo player doesn't feel too bad. Enemies aren't too challenging. Your arsenal is capable of most of the work. And the loot grind is, at least thus far, reasonably enjoyable enough to keep you playing even by yourself. Bioware does retain at least a small bit of their grasp on narrative here as well. The second you land into the game, you are greeted with the gorgeous, albeit uncanny valley character models and a book on a desk that begins to introduce you to the lore of the game. There is clearly a lot of it here. And talking to characters does still feed you dialogue options, even if they are incredibly dumbed down. But regardless, there appears to be story here and there appears to be lots of lore. The problem is, the most important mechanics of this kind of game are going to be its balance and endgame, and for now, we have to wait and see on those. But things are at the very least trending weirdly upward and downward. Here's one area that's more concerning and a bit speculative. You know, it's just paper that some king on the mountain said was worth something. You know, gold, I understand, it's shiny. The really dark realities of Anthem come in the EA-isms that are more likely than not entirely out of the control of Bioware. Is it good that the game does not include pay-to-win mechanics, the same way something like Star Wars Battlefront did at launch? Yes, it absolutely is. But just because a system isn't built to manipulate gameplay does not mean a system isn't built to manipulate you. It's interesting how much Anthem is now being compared to Warframe. Warframe is a free-to-play game with a cosmetic microtransaction system that is a la carte, and almost entirely free of any player manipulation. It's wonderful. Yet this very year we've seen Black Ops 4 release, microtransaction free, and then a month later implement an absolutely grotesque black market mechanic that is borderline unethical, all revolving around microtransactions. A huge juxtaposition there. People in the industry have caught glimpses of Anthem's store. Hell, you can see it in the demo. It's worrying that you seem to be able to use currency to buy crafting parts, which, assuming you can do so for rare parts, and assuming that currency is purchasable, which it's pretty clear it will be, it could indeed stealthily create a pay-to-win or at least pay-to-level your gear reality. Upon first blush, it appears that the game's cosmetic systems will be incredibly microtransaction-heavy as well. This is unsurprising. 
The real question that can't and won't be answered until the game launches in full at least is whether or not this system is integral to endgame loot progression and whether or not this system creates a destiny-like social strata in which pressures to keep up with these microtransactions eventually wins out, they become purchased more, and the microtransactions become more aggressive as a result. If Bioware and EA can find a balance, a happy medium that keeps the suits and ties at EA happy with the reoccurrent spending opportunities while also allowing Bioware to maintain their gameplay and progression system sanctities, there's no reason at all to be super concerned about the ability to engage with them. If, however, EA mucks this up and pulls an Activision and implements a far shadier system post-launch or the system that is there is tough to begin with, Anthem and Bioware ship could sink along with every bit of Stark tech in the game. Anthem's demo is just that, a demo. It rather smartly avoids showing all of its cards too early, and instead provides a simple glimpse of the foundation that the game is being built on top of. But I'm afraid this is because EA knows they don't have a good hand, and are holding out hoping we fold and buy before they have to show it. This is not a beta. Our feedback is not going to change what this game is when it launches in just a few weeks time. But there really isn't any wiggle room for changes in the first place in this period. It is very clear what Anthem wants to be, a gameplay-first Bioware game that sheds a lot of the narrative weight that has been the identity of the studio for years in favor of multiplayer hop-in, hop-out carnage. This is going to disappoint a lot of people that were hoping for a more traditional narrative from Bioware. It isn't absent, it just appears to have been deprioritized. In many ways, for reasons like these, Anthem may still be a tough sell for people. But what's important to say is this. Anthem has had an incredibly rocky development. Turnover amongst higher-ups on the project has been remarkably high, and the shakeups in development almost certainly had an effect on the game. But for the game to be essentially fighting from behind, and put on a first showing that inspires even a marginal amount of hope in at least its gameplay, is something I guess worth commending. That is great, but the reality is in the problems. These problems are going to either be the thing that breaks Anthem or the thing that brings Anthem its comeback, but the reality is, is that if the game launches in this state, it's not necessarily going to be finished. Now, again, underneath all of this, the game is quite wonderful. It's, 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 it's enjoyable. I don't know what the story is going to be. I don't know how the end game is going to hold up, but the actual experience of playing it is a great time. But man, this cannot be another... Destiny 1.5 situation. There are now reports that the game will only have three stronghold missions when the game launches, which is essentially this game's version of Strikes. Now we're only going to have three of those, one of which is already in the demo, which means there's only two of those. I mean, I don't know how content deplete this game is going to be. I mentioned earlier in this video that I had been talking to a lot of people that were privy to this game, privy to the development of this game, and people that have been a part of the alpha, and I kept hearing the same things over and over and over again. People had played the game outside of the alpha, people had played the game in other circumstances, people had seen the game, also the same thing. This game is probably going to be delayed. And I kept hearing that and hearing that and hearing it, and then it never got delayed. And a couple people said, okay, it probably should have. And that freaked me out even more. Now, we're sitting here and we're hearing things and we don't know how content or this is gonna be. We don't know if these problems are gonna be able to be fixed. It's unfortunate. Because if this game launches and it's a significantly substantial product and these problems are fixed, this could be a great game. And I'm not saying it won't be, but what I am saying is there's a lot of work between this build of the game and the final build that has to be done to make that reality come true. And if this game needed to be delayed, I knew it wouldn't be because EA does not want to miss this financial quarter. EA wants to make sure this game gets out on time in the time that they want it to to please their stockholders. And that scares me. Could this be amazing? Yes. Could it be trash? Absolutely. I will let you guys know when the game fully launches, but I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of this whole release a game beta demo thing two weeks before it comes out and then see what happens then? Is that enough time to fix anything? Absolutely not. Do you guys think this is a good idea? Does it make you more hype for the game? Does it make you want to buy the game? Or does it turn you off to the game? Like I'm seeing a lot of people say, oh, I'm canceling my pre-order or I'm doing this is that where you're at? Do you enjoy what you've seen of Anthem? Are you interested in Anthem? Are you going to buy Anthem? Let me know what you guys think about this game down in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious. I'm kind of working in isolation here. Everybody else has just gotten their hands on the game as well. So, you know, I don't know what anybody else thinks. So let me know. You know, I'm, I'm very curious to see if I'm the only one experiencing these problems, which I know for a fact I'm not. But if you're experiencing them, I guess, and, and how they're affecting your gameplay. 
So let me know down in the comments. We'll have a real conversation. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're not yet a member of this team, press subscribe. I normally put out gaming analysis and examinations twice, uh, sometimes three times a week. So hit subscribe so you do not miss any of those. Um, they're usually much more highly edited than this, um, but these discussion videos do come once a week. So keep an eye out for these as well. Uh, as always, my Twitter handle will be in the top pinned comment down below. You can follow me out to get an idea of what games I'm playing, find out you know what games are coming to the channel next, participate in polls. I often let you guys decide on things like thumbnails and titles. Um, maybe even this one, I'm not sure. Well, that's that comes after this part. Um, but follow me on the Twitter handle for all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you guys for the support. Thank you for making this possible. Um, thank you for being a viewer. Uh, whether you're one here begrudgingly or one here because you enjoy the content, I appreciate you nonetheless. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, I'm sorry. Uh, I put out more and more content each and every week. Um, maybe you'll catch one of the highly edited ones. Maybe you'll enjoy that. But if not, thank you for giving me and this channel a shot. And until next time, guys, I'm out.